What's going on everyone, Tanner here and in this one we'll do the 9 month update on the $0 free terrarium. To recap, I built this terrarium back in April of 2018 to show you that it's possible to make a terrarium completely free. Since then, this terrarium is doing really well and growing like crazy. I didn't want to let it go any longer without maintenance though, so I decided that now was the best time to do the update. Before we can access the interior of the jar, the lid must be removed. Unlike my other setups, this one is sealed up with a few household items including a plastic bag and a rubber band. The burlap on the other hand was used simply for aesthetics. It's probably a good thing that I did maintenance now because when I tried to remove the rubber band it was totally dry rotten and it snapped. I knew this would happen eventually, but I didn't expect it to happen that quickly. Now that the terrarium is open, we can't do anything else. First, we gotta give the terrarium a good sniff. This one has a really unique aroma, but it smells like some variation of the forest nonetheless. As such, we can have confidence that the terrarium is healthy and will continue to do well. At first glance, I'm sure that you could tell this terrarium was growing like a weed, but from the top down, it's even more apparent. I mean seriously, look at all of that sphagnum moss. Something else worth mentioning is that the top bit of the driftwood is covered in a bunch of little fungi. Pretty cool, right? When working on this small of a scale, sphagnum moss does really well as a background plant. Here, let's spin the terrarium around and give you a better perspective of what I mean. It has completely covered this side of the jar and looks really cool. However, if left unchecked, it would definitely overrun this terrarium and ruin the entire aesthetic. Not to mention that it would also choke out all of the other plants. We better get in there and do a good trim so that doesn't happen. In doing so, I just wanted to cut it down a little shorter and thin it out slightly. Although it would grow back if I trimmed too much, I'm being very cautious throughout this process because I don't want to ruin the aesthetic. You may be wondering, what is he doing with all of the moss trimmings? Well, I'm putting them in this little container to set aside for other projects. There's no point in getting rid of them if we can easily reuse them for something else. Anyways, while doing maintenance, I also noticed that there are a few dead sections down in the bottom of the terrarium. This is extremely common with sphagnum moss, especially because of how tall it grows. If you can't see the dead sections, then it really doesn't matter, but in this instance, it's kind of an eyesore. So I removed the dead sections and replaced them with some of the trimmings from earlier. Now we'll move on to the foreground. As you can see, these mosses are slightly overgrown as well and are hiding a lot of the hardscape. That's nothing a little trimming won't take care of, so let's get to work. Doing so was a lot less involved than the sphagnum moss, but it made a total mess. To clean it up, I meticulously removed all of the moss trimmings with my tweezers and set them aside for later. If I wanted the moss to grow in denser, I could have left all of the trimmings where they were, and in no time, the moss would have grown in twice as thick as before. I don't think any of it needs to be thicker in this setup though, so removing the trimmings was the best option. The last section that I have to address is the other background plant, which is this liverwort. It's growing in really well and is probably my favorite plant in the entire terrarium. However, there were a few rogue pieces of moss growing among it that needed removed. From there, I slightly trimmed and thinned out the liverwort. Like the other plants, I did this to hone in on my desired look for this terrarium. Doing so also stimulates new growth, so it's never a bad idea to give a proper trim. Lastly, I fine tuned the scape with my tweezers. As 
After all of the maintenance, we were left with a ton of moss trimmings. It's a little compacted because I sprayed it down, but believe me, there's a ton of moss here just waiting to be used for other projects. Now that the plants are trimmed and ready to go, we'll clean the interior of the jar using a section of a microfiber cloth. You probably remember seeing me use paper towels and cotton balls for this in the past, but a cloth works better because it leaves behind less debris. Like usual, I should also mention that this part of the maintenance is very important because it will remove any debris that would otherwise obstruct our view. Getting the glass as clean as possible will also allow the light to more effectively pass into the container. And trust me, your plants will thank you for this. Since our terrarium was open for about 20 minutes, a little bit of the moisture left the system. I also think that some of it may have escaped over time due to the degradation of the rubber band. So I used a pipette to redistribute some of the dechlorinated water back into the terrarium. Nowadays, I like to use the pipette instead of spraying because I can methodically add the water without getting it all over the glass. The terrarium is good to go until the next time we do maintenance, so let's seal it back up. First, I placed the plastic bag back over the opening. Then I added three rubber bands. I used three this time around so that I have a backup plan in case they dry rot prior to doing maintenance again. Next, I concealed everything with a burlap and secured it with a cotton string. Lastly, I cleaned the exterior of the jar with a microfiber cloth to remove any fingerprints and make the terrarium look mint. Nine months of growth and a little maintenance later and you have the zero dollar free terrarium. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this terrarium is doing absolutely phenomenal. I almost hate to say it since it cost me nothing to make, but this has easily become one of my favorite terrariums. It's so simple and I personally think the combination of textures created by the moss in conjunction with the scape looks extremely natural. Believe it or not, you could easily do the same by following the demonstration from the original video. I'll leave that linked up in the description and at the end of the video in case you missed it. Before we end this, there are a few highlights worth mentioning. The first thing I want to show you is that we have a fern growing out of the false bottom on the back side of the terrarium. After seeing this, I have no doubt that the rattlesnake fern in the native terrarium and this one here came from the sphagnum moss. I harvested the moss for both terrariums from the same location, and these ferns are present there, so it totally makes sense. I'm not sure if I'll let the fern grow in this one because it will likely ruin the aesthetic, but it's fascinating nonetheless. I also noticed that as I was editing the footage, that there was a small worm present in this clip. Till now, I haven't noticed any organisms living within here, but I'm going to have to keep a close eye now that I saw this worm. I'd imagine there are definitely springtails in here as well, but again, I haven't seen anything else. Like I've said in previous videos, when you create a native terrarium without sanitizing the materials, life will inevitably show up, and sometimes that's part of the fun. 
Anyways, I'm thrilled for how well it's doing and I can't wait to have it for years to come. It's definitely giving me a ton of inspiration to go out and make another native terrarium when weather allows. So if that's something you'd like to see in the future, and if you want to see more of this terrarium, be sure to subscribe and join the Serpa Squad. That is, if you haven't done so already. As always, I'd greatly appreciate it if you took a moment to like the video if you did, and leave a comment. Both really do go a long way, and I do try my best to reply to most of the comments. And on that note, I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch, and I'll see you next week. Peace.